the ultimate battle between the greatest warriors in all the world. Time is running out. GT. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm Wokey and I'm actually here with Zenrot. Hello. I know, welcome back. Uh, after my one retirement episode, I retired and now I'm back. Yeah, it's good to have you back. It was weird with me just by myself. Thing, things were yeah, said. Yeah, Dokkan is not conducive to uh, just talking about alone for an hour. No, that's why a lot of those YouTuber videos are like around 10 minutes long or are like i don't know how they, other people <laughs> yeah or with other people or they're just going deep dives on specific units and they're going like they're like giving like theories about what could come up next we don't do that no more we got burned one too many times by dokkan <laughs> yeah i'm getting sick of a theory and then dokkan releases an hour later yeah yep yeah. so if you guys don't know it's the four years of dokkan um and so for the four years... It's a whole lot like the two years of Doka. Almost exactly like the... Okay, so the two on the big boy scale today are Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta and Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Let me start off by saying... Well, what about... Did you do B-Pan last week? No. So B-Pan is also going on. We're going to do a 3LR special. Uh, I just want to take this time Should out. Should do Gear 2. Uh, Gear, okay. Because we'll do... he's the one who's getting the highest rating from me <laughs> of all of them. Okay. And so Gear is also getting on here. We'll talk about those four... But I just wanted to take a quick note and say how I literally woke up today and remembered that that the four year was GT themed again. And I, there was just like an anger of me of like, I can't believe GT gets like three LRs and their joke LR is actually very decent. Meanwhile, Dragon Ball has one lr in the in the working and another lr that is literally the hugest joke in the world that it automatically gets done by fucking women and which is yamcha is the yamcha lr built into his passive he just automatically gets stunned and that's accurate to his character but also what the fuck why is there so much love for gt it doesn't deserve to be all it didn't deserve to be on the second year <laughs> Why is there, like, no love for Dragon Ball? It makes no fucking sense. It is weird. Oh, well, I th I think the reason is because GT has all the hyper-edgy kids who want to, like, shit all their money into the game. Like, you're not going to get the Edgelord kids hype to spend money on, like, Piccolo Jr. Like, nobody's going to do that. Not in Dokkan, anyway. They'll do it in Legends. I feel if they make an LR Legends, good enough... Everybody went for that shit. Yeah. If I feel if they make an LR good enough, they won't care. The, that's the actual secret of Dokkan, is that if the unit is extremely good, nobody gives a shit. There's plenty of people oh, who... Oh, see, I, I think they'll care. I think that they're... ...be enough that they will care. Like, look at all the people in Dragon Ball Fighters who they... When Videl got announced? For Videl. Ugh, where's Raditz? Ugh, Videl. Even though she looks awesome and really good. I guess it just maybe there's just a disconnect here. There's a, an even bigger disconnect in my mind that says that GT doesn't deserve to be shit in a toilet, let alone be given two years. Well, I'm of, with you on that. I'm 100% with you on that. It's a bummer. It's the biggest bummer because Dragon Ball is awesome and GT is, in every words, a failed super from back in the day. <laughs> and even uh, and the problem with GT too is that you can't fucking do anything but Super Saiyan 4 because it's the only remotely kind of okay thing in it. Yeah, there's... They're like, never going to be like, whoa, a baby Vegeta anniversary? Because nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares about baby Vegeta. The people who care about baby Vegetas are the ones who have deluded themselves into thinking that a backstory is a good character. So people who care about baby Vegeta are, care are people I don't feel like caring about. Like, let's just put it that way. Yes. If you're really into baby Vegeta, then good luck being on your own because I don't want to deal with you. Also, if you feel like we are personally attacking you, we are not attacking you. We are literally attacking GT. I don't care if you like GT. I fucking hate GT. I don't care at all what you think about GT. Uh, but my god, it's just not good. It is not good at all. It is abysmal. And so with that in mind, 
let's start by just saying the straight up rule, which we mentioned before, but we're just going to reiterate again. We This is very clear. We're making it very clear on our bias against GT. All GT units, but... Be, uh, but Pan and Giru suffer minus two on the big boy scale. That's just an automatic. <laughs> you have to factor that in. They automatically get minus two. So that's just the way it's going to be. So with that, let's get into the actual units. Oh, that was good. I needed to get that out there. All right, let's start with uh, the worst one, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, <laughs> which I feel is already going to cause a tiny shit storm because I said that. Yeah. So, Okay. Even if he's good, which maybe the jury's out. There's a lot of debate on if he's good or not. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Let Personally, me... think they're both really good because just because active skills are really really good right now because yeah. there's only three people that have them. So personally, I think they're excellent in terms of are they good or not. Oh yeah, there's no denying but that these units. If you're pulling for them, Saiyan Four Vegeta, which is the worst character design in Dragon Ball history. Purple Undertaker gloves. Uh, I am gonna give him a minus five on the big boy scale. Just right off the bat. Not even looking at negative it. Five. <laughs> and then he loses the two. So I guess it's negative seven. All right, starting Not with a forever. negative seven. The funny thing is, is that I was about to start with... Uh, so just to get... I, you know, at this point, I think everyone knows. He's the Vegeta lineage. It's HP 130, attack 170%. It's SDR, get that. His links are the exact same, except for they remove shocking speed to both the go to, to both the Super Saiyan fours, and they did it specifically, I think, to fuck over uh, Gohan because now Gohan doesn't link with Super Saiyan four Goku anymore. <laughs> um, Classic. Yeah, he. Uh, that was one of the things I saw. I was looking up at uh, the mod chat that I was in where Mobile Man and Lola got. They don't have any straight up math yet because until they release something, I don't want to say anything about it. Um, but yeah, the. <sighs> I'm going to have Vegeta is like everything I hate about Dokkan put into one card because here's the thing in the two year they did the same thing. Super Saiyan 4 Goku had more tech and Vegeta was more defense oriented and people were like, nah, Vegeta is good because of that defense. And then it became very clear that Vegeta was lacking in a lot of attack as more dudes ended up having having way more HP and Vegeta just wasn't cutting it compared to like Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Like even now, Super Saiyan 4 Goku still holds up just because of how crazy his attack is. He doesn't have any defense, but you can... Isn't he actually technically more damaging than the green one that came out later? I believe that is the case. I just don't remember it. Full power one or whatever. He is very strong. Different names, but yeah. He was built strong. I recall him being pretty silly good. Yeah, he is built strong and he's built to last. The agility Super Saiyan 4 Goku suffered because his he all he had was defense. His attack is okay, but eventually the game caught up and now like anyone does 120% attack. It's nothing special. So yeah, that's like the default. And then two years later, they do the same shit again, except for Goku starts with 80% attack and Vegeta starts with no attack and just 80% defense. <laughs> Ah. so you have this like you have i'll give it to this on turn one he is super fucking tanky it won't matter though because you're hitting with a, a noodle that barely reaches the heights of fucking lr hercule obviously by ah. by next turn he's much stronger don't don't get that twisted into me saying that he, lr hercule is better he's not just straight up not i like lr hercule better but yeah he it's so weird i don't like that design of him at all they should have just if they wanted to make them both equal, they should have both just started with 80% attack, 80% defense, and left it at that. This stupid-ass idea that, oh, I would love to have 20% attack the next turn is maybe the dumbest thing Dokkan has ever done. It ruins cards that would otherwise be perfectly fine. It's the same reason Super 17, who apparently when you have one dupe in him, is good. I still think sucks shit because I don't like using him. <laughs> Because he has a... does this weird thing where they don't seem to design their units around the content in their game. No, not really. They don't. Ever. Uh, and then the other thing that he does, which both the Super Saiyan 4 LRs do, which is um, they get two key for each rainbow and their respective color. So Vegeta gets STR. So it's very easy to like do the 18 key. Uh... But also, these 18 keys are fucking lazy. They're both the exact same for both cards. Yeah, I've heard the animations. I haven't actually seen the animations, but I've heard that they're like 
embarrassingly bad. They're just like for an LR, like, like some of the worst LR. Yeah, just like default generic looking animations that aren't cool at all. They've done better. It just feels like the LR trunks and my have a better uh, 18 animation than both the Super Saiyan fours. And I feel like really the if they didn't have the active skill, they would still be good units. But also, they'd be very disappointing. But the active skills would kind of save them at the end of the day. Because you are able to just literally shoot off an 18 key super four turns in. But even with everything put into, even though the fact that he is a good unit, I'm going to have to just say straight up, he's a 1 out of 5 on the big boy. So let's take minus 7 <laughs> and 1. <laughs> and let's say he is around a but minus... But don't forget he gets the negative 2. He gets a negative 2, that's so right. He gets minus 2 from your score, so he's actually a minus 1 from you. He's actually a minus one. And so minus one plus minus six is minus seven. <laughs> so he is a minus seven on the big boy scale. No, mine is minus. So he's minus eight. Okay. So he's minus nine. Minus nine. On oh, the big no, no. Because, no. well, I gave him a minus five and then the negative two came into effect. So he was minus seven. Yes. And then you gave him a minus one total. Okay. So minus eight. On the big boy scale. <laughs> He's a minus eight on the big boy scale. That's the important thing to recognize. He is minus eight on the big boy scale. Uh, the big boy scale is, again, dictated 100% about us. It's not about attack. It's not about defense. It's about how much we actually care about these units and how big these boys do we think they are. And I, Vegeta just isn't doing it for me. He's a tiny boy. He's uh, a negative a boy. boy. He's a negative boy. Like, how do you look at him? He's a negative boy. I'm done with this negative boy. I would rather look at gifts of The Undertaker than look at Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. <laughs> And let's go Pretty on. Pretty similar looking. They are very similar looking. Only difference is that Undertaker actually did stuff. Take that. I'm willing to put I in. Th- I was about to say, you have no idea about any of the feats of the Undertaker. Uh, I know he threw Mick Foley off a cage. That's right. And that's more than uh, Vegeta's ever done. Did Mick Vegeta throw Mick Foley Vegeta off the cage? The one getting thrown off the cage. Exactly. I, that's why Vegeta's the jobber. Um. Also, I just want to say that isn't it weird that the the so the Goku lineage and the Vegeta lineage go to Super Saiyan 4 Goku, but the sub leaders are the actual rivalry rivalries of Vegeta and Goku. Like, do when you think of Super Saiyan 4, do you think about like oh the eternal struggle of them battling against each other? I just think about <laughs> wasn't it dumb no. that, that Vegeta had to use a machine to get Super Saiyan 4? <laughs> Yeah, remember when all he had was Super Saiyan 2 until Bulma gave him that machine? Yeah, he literally had to use assistance. So I don't see them as, like, the end-all, be-all of anything. I also don't see Super Saiyan uh, Blues as their rivalry either. That's just them continuously training with each other. I don't see that. If it was anything, it should have been um, the Saiyan Saga, uh, Vegeta and Goku. That should have been the LRs. That should have been... I would have liked that. I would have liked that a lot. That, I feel, actually fits with where it all began. I think that's where you should start it and where it should be kind of the end-all conversation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Let's move on to Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Uh, So he's basically the same as um, Vegeta, except for he's strong. He actually does damage. Yeah, and he doesn't get fucked over. So here's a funny thing that I've realized that, which was a problem two years ago and is still a problem. Um, in order for Vegeta to activate Soar the, uh, the Roar of the Saiyans or whatever, he needs to have, um, he needs to bring in a Goku. He needs to either bring in Super Saiyan 4 Goku or Super Saiyan 3, uh, Goku, because there is no Vegeta good enough to support him in it. Because otherwise you have to use, like, Ape Vegeta, and there's no, uh, there's, like, yes. <laughs> Ape Vegeta. Yeah, like, Vegeta gets screwed over in the Roar of the Saiyans link side, so you have to bring in someone that's not getting the full benefit of the Vegeta. So, in a Vegeta-centric team, you still have to bring in a Goku to get the full power out of Vegeta. (laughs) The bullet does fine, but you won't activate the link. That's the important thing, is activating the link. And there's no good linking partners for uh, Vegeta in the Vegeta side of the family. Yet, they could change it. Who knows? Um... It's kind yeah. of fitting, though, to me, I think, that Vegeta can't link with his own family very well. Yeah, apparently. Uh, to be fair, neither can Goku, but it's mo- mostly just Gohan. Gohan, in ultimate form, just cannot, for the life of him, ever link with a Goku. Unless it's like Kamehameha. Gohan they can't need link it. with anybody, because they're like, Gohan is never ready for war. 
No. He has never been ready for war. What he is, though, is that he has, like, martial arts training. They always give him, like, these dumbass links that never go with anything with Goku. Like, G- no, he doesn't have genius. That's that's a Vegeta thing. Uh, But, yeah, it's, it's weird. Anyway, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. How do you feel about him? He's exactly the same as Vegeta. It's almost exactly um, the same, except for he's strong. So I think he automatically <laughs> gets <laughs> bonus points. He isn't a wet noodle I, on turn one. So really hate like all things super saiyan 4 Mm -hmm. i am coming around slightly on goku's design not because i think it's good Mm -hmm. i think it's really bad in terms of like goku like that's not what goku is supposed to look like no it's not hey ish with it just as a general design like if that was just a character okay Hmm. it's not great but it's not bad because it's goku it sucks but he doesn't have the gloves, which helps a lot. He does have a lot of other weird things, but he doesn't gloves, have the gloves. doesn't have, like, the skin-tight pants. And while he does have a mullet, it's, like, not... It's not the same. <laughs> it's a different kind because of Because he mullet. actually has bangs. Vegeta doesn't have bangs, so he looks, like, straight up, like, one of those failed, like, glam rockers who just sits, like, outside of his truck and drinks beer all day. Yes, yes, exactly. He but does Goku look- at least looks like a semi-respectable human being. Semi. Uh, and then I'm gonna give him a three out of five. And then you factor in the minus two, and he gets a one out of five. Or he gets a one out of five. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking real. The the, a lot of like a lot of the defending I see from Super Saiyan Four Goku mostly revolves around Xenoverse Goku, and that's the one Super Saiyan Four I just have no idea because I I don't I'm. You know, I don't get super into heroes. Does look pretty good. Xenoverse Goku has a really good outfit. I don't know anything about his plot, and I don't think anybody knows anything about his plot. Fair enough. No one ever claims really to. Really good outfit. <laughs> Very good outfit. So, this is not Xenoverse Goku. This is shitty ass GT Goku. So, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with similar of a 3 out of 5. Even though he he does hit hard, I do he doesn't like hit as hard as Goku and Frieza, which is apparently uh what I could tell is literally the hardest hitting uh LR in the entire game. It's probably the most game breaking LR in the entire game apparently. Uh once you have everything uh factored in. But uh yeah, a 3 out of 5, so he ends up being a 1 out of 5 big boy. I think he's a uh, yeah. It's it's a shame he's GT related. <laughs> That's the biggest shame. Yeah, him. yeah. It's not great. No, you know you know what this could work as is like if there was like a, a an episode of Super where they debut debuted like Red Goku. You know how there's Goku Black. This could be Goku Red, and then Goku Red would be this. God, isn't it? <laughs> and then Goku Red would show up, and you'd be like, "What the fuck is this? He looks nothing like Goku. He must be a raging asshole." And then you learn he is. And they fight, and then he gets an actual character besides Goku. All right, let's see. Next unit, that's that's LRB Pan, the one of the greatest LRs in the entire game. On the big boy scale, so she has the other one with an active skill, uh, which for one turn after three turns she gives everyone attack one hundred thirty three percent up for one turn. She recovers 30% of damage dealt as HP and a high chance to reduce damage received by 55%. Uh, and she also... they All these guys, by the way, have voice lines in their big ass... I think in their active skill, and I think only B-Pan sounds good. For some reason, the audio in Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta just sounds weird. So I haven't heard it. Yeah, I heard it. But B-Pan's is pretty decent. Yeah, B-Pan sounded pretty decent. The animation is her flying, and there's just a bunch of fucking butterflies. Not no bees, no bees in her art. Yeah, I all. noticed that. It's all the butterflies. <laughs> it's all butterflies. Uh, which is funny, which is hilarious. She's also dropped the baby from her tur, so that means she let <laughs> she let go of the baby and flew into the air. <laughs> That's the start of the LRB pan. Uh, just kind of on like a pure. I can't believe that they made this. Could you imagine when they first gave out B-Pan that she would eventually go LR? 
could you imagine like way back in the day that they would do this? We thought that the anniversary Goku, the one that would go Super Saiyan 3 on year 3, was going to be an LR. Because it just made so much sense. And they didn't make him an LR. <laughs> they made him... Yeah, no. They were like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Here's a completely new one, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, B- that's now that's still an SSR. Yeah. And B-Pan, to her credit, is the best healer in the entire game. On the right team and with the right supports, she heals the... In- she is like a sensu... Not like a dende. Because she heals entire damage on that one turn. The only problem, I think, is that she has weird, like, key problems. But that's any LR that isn't a good LR. <laughs> that isn't a pullable LR. <laughs> they make the... Yeah. We can't make uh, free-to-play LRs too good. Otherwise, what are we going to do, right? <sighs> but yeah. And then I think she also can get her... Uh... Oh, wait. She actually can get her... She gets her 18 key at 15. So that's a good, like, um, benefit to her. She gets her 12 key at 9... And her uh, big ass key at fifteen, so that actually helps a bit. Yeah, so that's B Pan. What are you feeling? Um, I am gonna dock her a little bit because she has butterflies and not bees in her super attack. Um, I go ahead and go with a four out of five, three three point five out of five, not four, not quite four. I I, th- I think I'm willing to give the four out of the pure audacity of making an, an a a B pan and then also making her her own separate unit. That's something they didn't give the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. He is just a, he is just straight up a Super Saiyan Blue unit. B pan they were like no this is Pan in a B outfit. It's a completely different character. Completely different from Pan. Yes, and on that level, I think she gets a four out of five for me. So put together, she's like a 3.8 out of 5 out of big boy. Does that sound uh, about that's, right? That's, yeah, we'll go 3.8. 3.8 8 out of 5. And a very, a, boys. a very healy boy. I just wish there were more bees. Too much butterflies, not enough bees. That's the... the yeah, the, it's a disturbing lack of bees. They're already endangered. Yes, exactly. You have to save the bees. I've heard from countless people, and specifically one person a whole bunch, you got to save the bees. So I'm assuming exactly. people are doing their best. Uh, next, in our final unit, and probably the most, the balls on these people, uh, we, got, <laughs> we got Giru as a TUR with his own potential system in his own uh, essay animation, which is great. <laughs> That ends. Ah, the essay is fantastic. The essay is. He does a little robot dab. He does like a robot dab, and it's amazing and it's hilarious. I cannot believe you know we talk about. Uh, I can't believe they made B Pan a unit. They made the Dragon Radar a unit. A <laughs> character who's <laughs> uh, o- only thing I remember from is that he said Giru a lot and that he ate the Dragon Radar and was in in essence a talking Dragon Radar. They were like, no, he deserves to get a TUR. <laughs> and chances are later down the road, an easy A, just to make him better. Reminder that Krillin only has one TUR. <laughs> Reminder, yeah, exactly. One TUR and the potential system... Giro no- has one. Yeah. Also, Giro has a better like support because he gives key uh, to attack and defense 60% when a hybrid Saiyans category alley is on the team. And then Seekers of the Dragon Ball get... Uh, two key and attack and defense 30 percent up so in the right Good. circumstances he gives 90 percent up to one to to two units so obviously seekers of the dragon ball is a uh still up and coming we don't know who will be the actual lead goku jr is the current like weenie team uh but i don't know I think there's potential for them to grow him out, especially if they do decide to make a legit good Gohan who was helping the search the Dragon Balls on Namek or something. Not going to happen, but maybe one day they'll decide that Gohan deserves to live. Maybe one day. I think he I think it's really good for a support unit that's free and that who attacks the enemy by damming. You don't get a lot better nah, units. Yeah. I'm, also, I think I better than Krillin. I cannot stress this enough. His pose and his TUR looks like the Jeb Bush wins meme. And every time I look, 
And every time I look at him, I laugh and I enjoy myself. Because I just imagine Giro in front of a, a giant state that's all in red and it says GT finally wins and his arms are up in the air going, yes. <laughs> Giro did it. Giro wins. Perfect. And so that's Giro, man. I. What are you feeling on this guy? Um, hmm. Four out of five. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go five out of five. The Jeb Bush comparison is just too good. I just every time I think about it, I laugh a little, <laughs> and it's hilarious to me. Is that is that a four and a half out of five? No, it's five out of five for me, straight up. Well, mine, yours is a five out of five. Mine is a four out of five. Yeah, that's a four point five out of five. Then he's a very good boy, a very uh big, apparently very bigger than a lot of the previous boys that we looked at. It just goes to show you that when you are a good boy and you have actually good animations on your SA, it goes a long way. So those are our four units. Just to do a quick quick sum up, we have a negative eight on Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. We have a one on Super Saiyan 4 Goku. We have a 3.8 out of 5 for um, B, for B-Pan. And we have a 4.5 out of 5 for Giru. Does that sound right? I can see that. Yep, that's pretty good. All right, that sounds pretty good. So that means that remains that we still only have uh, three 5 out of 5 big boys. It's Gogeta, it's Krillin, and it's uh, Chi-Chi. <laughs> the only units to get 5 <laughs> out of 5 big boys. All right. With that, I think I'm going to... You want to do a quick, uh, while I look for the questions thread, you want to just do a quick rundown on those medals and your thoughts on the medals? Medals. You're yeah. going to have to enlighten me. The uh, the Dokkan medals. Coins. Yes, coins. You mean the summon coins? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So, for those of you that don't know, there's a new mechanic starting in this game. Uh, this game. In this uh, gotcha where whenever you do a multi, you get 10 coins to Baba to buy one of the units off the banner if you didn't get one. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it takes like, oh my god, it takes so many. So you get 10 coins per multi. So that's 50 stones translates to 10 coins. It takes 500 coins. Free copy of LR, Vegito, or Gogeta. Mm -hmm. 500 stones. Uh, I believe the other units are 400. The Goku. Uh, the AGL Goku that changes form. Yes. Actually, hang on. Let me, you know what? I'll pull it up right now just to get the exact numbers. Just to, to find the cheapest possible one. So it's 500 for the LRs, 400 for the AGL Transforming Goku, Frieza, Ultra Instinct Goku, uh, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, Android 17, uh, Angel Golden Frieza. Those are all 400. And then 200 for Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta. Yeah. From the two-year anniversary. Two years ago. Hmm. Still what? Uh, 20 multis? A round dish, I think. Stones. So you have to spend a thousand stones just to get enough coins to buy a unit from two years ago. It's crazy. I don't understand, Dokkan. I think it's a good idea, obviously. Anything that's something like this. And a lot going forward, maybe we'll see if anything changes. But deep down, all I can really think about is how, why didn't they just do this with the Baba Shop? Yeah. yeah like, like, even if you kept them this price, like, keep them this price, right? You sell an SSR, you get 10 coins, right? Mm -hmm. 50 SSRs, you can trade them for one. This. It's crazy. I don't know. I just feel like... We didn't get any, uh, obviously when this stuff came out, we didn't have time for questions, but I just feel like we need to get some feelings on it out there. It's still too early to have like definitive feelings, but 
my gut reaction is I don't feel like I'm ever going to be able to use any of these coins anyway. So, and by the time I am... Yeah, like... 3,000 stones. And the unit cycle. Shop just always has these guys. Mm -hmm. Next 30 days, they're gone. Yeah, that, that's also... 3,000 stones on this banner. If you want one of the LRs. And even then, you have to do it within that time frame. It just reminds me of a, another gotcha that has a very similar kind of not that good, but good in theory um, style mechanic, which is Fake Grand Order, which has something similar. Uh, in Fake Grand Order, it's way more random because you have to get, first of all, you have to get a SSR to five dupes, which is already something that only a whale can do. And then if you get a dupe, you get a wheel. So, and once you get 10 of those wheels, you can exchange that for an SSR. The difference is that when a unit is released, uh, if you have 10 wheels, you can just straight up get that unit now. So, like, there is no... The only limit cool. is that, is it available? That part of it is cool. The problem is actually getting 10 of those motherfuckers is something not possible for someone like me and only possible for crazy Japanese whales, which I really think this is the only thing that it's actually, in the end, going to benefit. It's not going to benefit people like me. It's not for yeah, people not like me. Yeah, not really. It's not for people it's like really me. It's really not. Like straight up, not for me. The straight up, the the step up banners, those are for me. Everything else, and you got a lot of people who are like, uh, they're finally giving back, you know. It's, but like, no, they're not. Like, what are you getting out of this? You're not getting shit. I ain't getting shit. I did my two multis. I got my two shitty SSRs, and I got nothing. It's the continuing. Yeah, you, you got you had two shitty pulls. You got your twenty coins. That is nothing. Nothing. All May twenty as well coins be is nothing. worth. I may as well just exchange them for stones. If they let me exchange them for stones, I would straight up just exchange them for stones. I don't see any reason for keeping them around. No, you're never going to get... No. Never. Unless they start doing banners where it's like, get double the medals. That's the only time I'm going to get them. Even then! Stones to get the LR. It's crazy. Again, but it's not for me. It's like straight up not for me. So I don't see like really anything. Like it's crazy to think that that people like it in terms of like for people saying like, oh, well, you just save up over a long time and you can get one. Fine. Whatever. Um, that you have to save like seven months to get to use one time. Then yeah. where you're coming from. Are you like, right? Oh, my God. I can't believe it's so generous of them. Flowers on there. Like, no, no way. How? What are you talking about? Like, it already took me three years for Dokkan to naturally get to the point where it was easy to get an LR. Where, like... Right? I, yeah, I was just eventually randomly able to get an LR. And it wasn't from a ticket. It was from legitimately using stones and going, like, well, maybe one day. And that day came three years later. <laughs> and that was the old... Yeah, and, like, people keep saying, wow, you know, that I didn't think they would ever put an LR on there for free. But like it's not, it's not free. It's not free. And money to get it. Like the only way to get it. Do you know how much money it is in like real stones? Like if you don't get vendor stones, do you know how much money it is? Probably way too much. Dollars. How much? One thousand three hundred dollars. Fuck that. One copy of the LR. I would already have pulled a bunch by then, unless yeah. in the amount of time you would have pulled you like to not have pulled one. $1,500 would be enough to like kill yourself already. Yeah, at that point, I'm into entering like YouTuber part seven. Uh, let's get this now, boys. Like, that's that's <laughs> if, if I'm getting that far, that's that's the kind of like <laughs> situation I'm in. I'm in a borderline Sahal. I can't pull Broly Legends territory. Like, at that point, cut your losses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole the Zahal Broly territory is dangerous. That is maybe the most that's make that makes me fear for every single banner is that I just don't want to get Zahald where you just enter this point where you feel like I've gone too far, but they have to give it to me eventually, right? Eventually the fucking has to stop. And the answer is is that the fucking can go all night long. Like fucking never ends. 
never ends. And for you to think like it could end, it's not possible. Even with a pity break system, Dragalia, they still fuck you. Because I got fucked right before the banner left. Because I was like, my pity's pretty close to being broken. And it got broken by a fucking five worm. And it's like, congrats. This was, nice. This was nice. <laughs> nice. I knew it was happening too. I've, I don't even look at animations anymore. I just straight up skip them. I'm like, fuck it. Give me what give me the shit i don't want to see your fucking animation of a character holding up a giant l in my face basically with elder water <laughs> i can see that uh i skip animations and games where i also don't care about it i i skip all of them basically yeah uh legends i start if the i like if i see the animation isn't going good i just automatically skip it like i don't need to legends i will watch the fight just because it's cool hmm if I know that the, the odds of me getting something good out of it are low, I will just tap through it. Like, I'll just skip all of the actual units. If I'm doing a multi, I'll see it all. But if I'm doing a single, I'm like, I don't have fucking time for this. Like, if you're just going to fuck That's me three, three different ways using these tickets, then I would just rather just get it over with. And then one time it didn't. Yeah, happen. my my three spare uh, tickets, UST tickets were all hero units. Uh, my first one was a hero unit. My second one was future Gohan which was nice. And then the third one broke my game, but it was ended up being Android 17, the um, extreme one, the new one. Uh, but yeah, that's gotchas. They're out to get you. They don't ever think that they're actually legitimately being generous. Don't. Don't. Just don't. And with that, I think we'll go into questions. I don't think we'll have time for many questions because we've spent a lot of time actually talking about just stuff <laughs> in general. <laughs> but we'll answer some. This first question comes from my sister Yaoi Mom, who says, How how you feel about Rey Mysterio killing a guy? And for the last fucking time, Rey Mysterio did not kill a guy. I don't know how many fucking times I have to say this. He was dead before the 619 hit. You can clearly see in the video that the 619 did not connect. It was not him. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I will need to review the evidence before I make a verdict. You do not want to see that video, my dude. It's uh, hard to... It's it's bad in the sense of like, okay. So pe for people who don't know, uh, Paraguay, I think his name was Paraguay Junior, was a Mexican wrestler. He was the son of an old uh, luchador, and during a match, something fucked up, and he landed wrong on his neck, and he instantly died in the ring. And you can see the moment he dies because he, like, usually when someone hits the ropes, there's a good like, oh, uh, there's some movement. He just falls straight down. Like there's a there's a clear there's something's wrong and that it's too late to actually help him. It's actually very sad to see because like they're continuing the match and they're ending it quickly because they're like, well, we need to end this shit now and get it done. If we need to end this so we can hurry up and get this guy to the back, but it was too late. He had already died in the ring and there was like a lot of weird regulation stuff around it too because it was like, well, if this happened in the U.S., this would never have happened because he would have gotten medical attention and then. The reports were basically like it wouldn't have mattered where it happened because he he died instantly. There was nothing they could have done to save him. Was it worse than Johnny Knox breaking his spine on the field? Um, no, and it, 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 like the result was worse because someone died. Yeah, so did not like, die. It's not as but uh, it was maybe the most graphic thing I've ever seen okay. in terms of like horrifying this he literally folds completely backwards Ooh, okay let me put it this way it's not bad in the sense of like you're not saying like something horribly fuck up it's not as bad as like uh, a jackass stunt gone wrong or something but it's bad in the sense of like it's hard to explain other than when you when you're a person so it's like uh it's just upsetting to see somebody die basically yes if you have never seen someone die it literally would be like it it, it, it it affects you in a way because you look at it and you go like, holy fucking shit. Like that's something that hits you like not in the sense of like, oh, that's bad. That's more hits you in like a in your soul kind of like you just feel wrong. You just feel like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Not like in the sense I, of like, oh, my God, what the fuck just happened? Not like that. And so I say now that, we all know that Rey Mysterio did not kill him. No. So stop fucking saying <laughs> stop spreading this <laughs> false information like you're one of the many super saiyan 4 vegeta defenders out there giving out fake videos about him doing good damage it's not 
It's not accurate. Follow the actual report, damn it. Thank you, sister. I love you. Uh, next one comes from uh, Paige Chef, where Chief Saber. I believe I can't pronounce her name correctly. Whatever. She knows who she Saber, is. Saber, I assume. Yes. Um, where is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta for the anniversary? Did you take him and hide him under the Wooper pile in your closet until they give you another Rayleigh or maybe a Bailey? Uh, I would not hide Gogeta. I would straight up kill him if he was anywhere <laughs> near me. So I especially would not put him in a Wooper pile. Um, yeah, that's where good stuff goes. You yeah. don't put Gogeta in there. Not Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta not, anyway. N- not allowed. No, you know that sign where it says no, there. no fun allowed from the Sonic comic. It's that, but it's just straight up no, no Super Saiyan four is allowed. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta Photoshop that before the next. All right, I'll remember that for later. I'll remember that before I go to work. <laughs> um, in terms, of, I I think I said this. I was talking to again the mods because if you forget, I am a mod. Uh, sometimes I forget. Um. I think that they would save Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and it's maybe the dumbest thing ever. They're saving him for a dual category of both Goku and Vegeta lines. <laughs> Double family. Yeah, so I don't know if any of the fusions are on Goku or Vegeta. I don't remember. But I don't think they are. I think later on when Gogeta is released, they're going to put both of them on uh, onto both sides because they are technically both Vegeta and Goku. Just like they are full Saiyan. So they're not full Saiyan. They're not. They don't. They're, they're not on the full Saiyan category. Really? Okay. Hmm. Yep. So maybe they're it's gonna. The maybe they'll save Gogeta for the straight up um, G- GT category because there's no GT category. Oh, well, that's it, true. The only the only categories are like divided up by arcs. It's like by shitty like Shadow Dragons, Arc. which Shadow yeah. Dragons after like two years after maybe a year after release finally got. Well, I guess they got full power, but even up till then, full power has everybody though. Yeah, it's still funny to me that there are only one. There's only one Shadow Dragons that would ever go on to Shadow Dragons, and it's debatable if you'd even want them on Shadow Dragons. Yeah, pretty much. At this point, you could build a, a, a Vegeta's family and a Goku's family, and that could be your Shadow Dragons team, and not include any Shadow Dragons. <sighs> But yeah, uh, I would never hide Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Trust me, that motherfucker's coming. That's just, just the same way that I know Omega Shenron is coming. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> They're coming. Uh, next question comes from Common. Thank you for the question, by the way. Uh, Common asks, How much Giro can a pan Giro if a pan's Giro can Giro Giro? And I say to Common, Common, shut up. But thank you for the question. <laughs> I also don't know how to answer that question. It's, uh, I don't answer think is six. The answer is six. There you go. Thank you for the question, Common. Uh, next question comes from Masum Kadir. And he asks, why is Wooper so adorable? I think it's because he doesn't have any arms. Like, look at him. He looks... Uh, I'm going to go with the arms thing, too. I, I feel like if he had arms, he would be kind of creepy. He would. And he does know Ice Punch, and I like to think that all he does is actually give a headbutt. And he puts his, because his head kind of looks like a fist, so he kind of cocks his head sideways and hits him with his head. (laughs) Uh, I think it's literally, it has to do with the arms thing. Because without the arms, they just look like a, they look like helpless idiots without arms. (laughs) Like, have you ever looked? Yeah, they really do. They look like, uh, it's hard to describe, but look at any, like, just giant whooper picture. And if you pictured them with arms, they would look creepy as fuck. But without the arms, they look like just like little tiny, like... They look like the um, they look like a planet of monsters that Jean Grey would kill when she was under the influence of the Phoenix. <laughs> That's the level of adorableness that they are in right now. It's pretty good. Thank you for the question. Uh, next question comes from Dark Zekrom, Dark Zekrom HD, and he asks if you could remake one Dragon Ball game, which one would it be and why? Uh. I'm going to assume that's Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, even a Dragon Ball GT, even though I don't think there's any GT games because they're all like shitty fighting games at that point. Like a Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the legacy of Goku thing is already kind of getting done with the RPG one. 
Project Z or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, that might end up being the thing where I'm like, oh, I wish there was an RPG. Well, they're already making one, so I'll just wait to see more info on that and see if that's going the way I want. Um, there was a very specific... I'll answer this one while you think. There was a very specific, like, Famicom game where it was a bunch of jump heroes, and it was Goku, it was Jotaro, it was a bunch of people, and they were, like, in a... Uh, action adventure kind of game which was also with some rpg elements where you controlled every single character and you went through all their worlds i would want to remake of that if that counts as a dragon ball game i like that that sounds cool yeah i would love to have like a just straight up like not a fighting game just an actual like action adventure like a like kingdom hearts but with shonen jump dudes so it's way funnier (laughs) so instead of getting kind of confused about like Man, I don't. I didn't watch Tangled. What the hell is this about? You go, man. I didn't read Prince, Prince of Tennis. What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> That's what I would like. What about you, Zen? Uh, I think mine would be Budokai Two because I really like the game board thing. Oh, okay. Like a Mario Party board to fight. <laughs> Mario, oh, I like that. Like oh, uh, I was gonna say like Mario Party, but with Goku in it. Basically, yeah. I think for I don't think I ever played anything past Budokai One. I think I only played Budokai One, and then later on, one of the uh, way later down the road games, maybe Budokai Three, but I never played uh, Two. It's weird. I enjoy Two. I think you'd like it. I mean, maybe one day I'll well, give it a shot, give it a look at. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes from Matt, and he asks, "Where would you put your Smash Brothers mains on the big boy scale?" Um. Hmm. So for mine, which are my main, say what? It depends on who who you consider to be my main. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, let me just put down my two characters that I like playing the most. But I because it's such a big roster, I don't want to just go with one character. So I go with Pichu, and then my other, uh, I guess, mains are Lucas and Ness because Lucas has been uh, Ness has been my boy since the original smash brothers i've loved using him using him a bunch um i would say pichu right now is five out of five he's a very destructive boy but i think he's a very big boy for how tiny he is and then ness and lucas are in a always like a around like a three out of five for me they're never as good as i would hope and i really don't like using their up b as recovery (laughs) so i always get fucked over because it's always like a learning experience but i love using them so that's where i would say around the big boy scale for them Okay. I do like that I think uh, Ness can apparently hit back people's grenades with his bat. <laughs> which is hilarious. Yes, he can act bat. That's a baller ass move. I don't care who the fuck you are. That's the most baller shit in all of Smash Brothers. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, doing that. Yeah. How do you feel, Zen? Who would you consider your, your dudes and what would they be on the big boy scale? Um. Hmm. guess cloud would be one because he was my uh first one that i played and i would i would give him a solid four out of five because they nerfed him oh that's right this is a we li- we're living in a post piranha plant world yeah all right that's fair thank you for and the then, question. Oh. uh my other one i'm picking two because you picked two go fair enough uh, my other one would be Shulk who gets a 5 out of 5 because of the accent and the fact that you can fight basically in a bathing suit. It's true. It's a very good factor into it. Very brave boy, that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you for the question. And we'll go on to the next one. This one comes from Primus, and it says, if you can make a nail art card, which character, any character you would like, what would it be, and what essay quote would they have? Um, I think it's pretty obvious for me. It would be a really, and it would be, uh, if possible, it would be that uh, an LR card. The art would be her in a bee costume with the gun pointed at her head. <laughs> so the I, that would that's be my favorite from Doctor Slump. It's really good. It's right. It's right. And then her TUR would be the one where she's with a noose around her neck, and then <laughs> she goes, "Oh boy." Ah. It's those. And uh, then her quote that would is powerful, very powerful. And then, um, 
uh, my the first quote would obviously be the Nietzsche. That would be the first one. And then the second one would be, um, God, there's like a fantastic quote that she has. I think there's a, I think I've, I, I've, at some point I've linked it, but there's like an entire arc of where uh, Aureli discovers that she doesn't have something that a lot of other people have. And it's amazing because there's a lot of commu- miscommunication, but I would like her quote to be, I would like one. I want one too. There it is. That's the quote. I want one too. That would be it. <laughs> no context. <laughs> But the people who are familiar with Slump knows what she's talking about. Uh, what about you, Zen? What would you feel? Uh, I want... Uh, and I want her SSR to be a little baby Shishi. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, like you get more and more... She gets like older and older as you get her to the LR. <laughs> she ages LR with ver- the LR. LR version is uh the one from Super where she's just like an angry old grandma. Perfect. <laughs> uh, could you think about what her uh, quote would be? Uh, this would get progressively bitchier. Till, so till- like, if she was a little kid, she'd be embarrassed. Mm-hmm when she's teenage uh like when she marries goku it would just be all like admiration for goku and then when she gets older it's just starting to get more and more fed up with goku's shit mm-hmm. quote it's just progressively more frustrated that goku is a fucking idiot and then her old lady quote would be the one where she's like fuck it it happens As sometimes hmm It'd be very fitting. It'd be the ultimate, like, uh, it's the similar, <laughs> I guess it's the similar situation of, um, what my mom must feel whenever she's with my dad. <laughs> I've, I've came to the realization really, which is why I had to think and stop and think about it. And which is, I think why I like Goku so much. I was trying to think about why a lot of Goku criticism, like rubs me the wrong way. And I realized it's because my dad and Goku are very similar. <laughs> it like, <laughs> a shocking amount of ways and uh it also eventually dawned on to me that that means but my mom is also very similar to chi chi in the way that she had to deal with her deal with him because i definitely remember uh in as a child uh if you were to take my dad smiling after writing indiana jones and then my mom's angry face of being left behind with three kids and disneyland by herself before cell phones were a big thing <laughs> And being left alone in the middle of a park with three kids, which she didn't know where her husband was, and then her husband comes back super smiling, beaming because he just rode Indiana Jones, you would get the summation of what would be a real life relationship version of Chi Chi and Goku. <laughs> behind that. I can 100% get behind that. Yeah. That also means I'm Gohan. So that would explain why I'm always disappointed in a lot of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, next question. This comes from Kref at Kref, TBH, and he asks, thoughts on The Promised Neverland, which I believe you started reading, right? I did. I'm not that far in. I think I'm only on like chapter 12 or something. Okay. So I'm currently caught up. I'm 100% caught up. Uh, it's been fun because I've been trying to not spoil anyone. So I've been very vague with my current tweets about what's currently been going on in the Promised Neverland, but I'm really liking where it's kind of going, especially since it's ending. Uh, but how do you feel, twelve uh, chapters? Uh, I uh, I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it because that's like a crazy spoiler. Yes. Yeah. yeah it, it's it's rough when the show has a or when the manga has a spoiler in fucking chapter one. Yeah to talk about it very tough that was the fun it's it's excellent very good yeah i would suggest uh people read it and if you're more into anime you can watch it but apparently the anime is going in a direction that i understand but i only understand because i understand what comes later if that makes sense i heard that the anime is good but not as good as the mega that's true that is that is, I would say that is true from what the the pace that they're going for. I want to say that is true. I I still want to check it out at some point because I think it's great that they actually made. It's a weird like 
it's a weird thing to have on jump. There's two weird things that are currently in jump that I can't believe are in jump. It's one is the Promised Neverland because it's so weird. And then the other one is uh, the Haunted Bathhouse with Yuna, which is another thing that's a Shonen Jump manga that I can't believe is on Shonen Jump. Because I feel like every other chapter, that main character is dangerously close to just inserting his penis inside a woman. So I just don't understand how <laughs> this manga is allowed to be on Shonen Jump. Uh, it's not exactly a jump uh manga that you would expect yeah i mean you could go back to like old like uh dragon ball and you could say oh what about uh chi chi's boobs coming close like you see them and then at one point goku pats down her vagina uh i'll just say goku never came close to inserting inside bulma that's the one thing that i'll say that it has <laughs> Like, they never went that far. They never went that far. And Yuna constantly goes so far that sometimes it feels like the the main creator just decided to make a uh, hentai doujin and then just took out the sex parts, but kept everything else in. <laughs> so he created the setup. <laughs> and it it's also has fantastic art and also has fantastic battle scenes. But also, holy shit, I can't believe this is allowed on Jump it's kind of crazy uh but yeah thank you for the question uh i won't read dark blastoise's question just know that i hope you this is what you wanted he wanted us to make sure to rate every new card on the big boy scale tm por favor uh oh. we have as far as i'm concerned we didn't rate the new vegeta and goku but we'll save those for a later day and last question comes from brandon deville and asks, what is your favorite unit in epic seven uh, Bologna. Bologna? It's either Bologna or Bellana. I don't know which one. Okay. But uh, her. That sounds good to me. It's another. It's a gotcha I don't play, so I'm just gonna nod my head and say I agree with your uh, very stereotypical anime girl. I like those. Uh, one of those haughty anime girls that's like boring things. Hmm. The super strong. I do like super strong anime girls. They're she fun. fights with a fan. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And with that, we're finally out of everything. Uh, just to give a quick... I'm going to try and do this all from memory because, again, Raiders fan is the legit uh, contributor of the list. The actual maker of the list that has to keep in track of it. Yeah. So, the units that are currently 5 out of 5, those are Krillin, Chi Chi, Super Saiyan Blue, Gogeta, I guess technically it's Super Saiyan Gogeta and who transforms into Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. Uh, yeah, but we, we added him specifically because of Gogeta Blue. Let's be real. Yes, it's specifically because of that. It's because his animation is just literally a spoiler for the movie if you've somehow been avoiding it this entire time. It's uh, just the movie. In what we'll now call the four range, <laughs> the four out of something range, the four to five, the four to 4.9 out four, of... Uh, Four and up, yeah. We have Broly, we have Giru, we have uh, Super Saiyan God Vegeta. He made it there too, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, and I want to say that's it. Um, I can't remember if I put Obachan on four out of five, but I want to say he's in three out of five. Uh, next, we have the three out of fives, which I believe this is where Obachan is. This is where um, B-Pan is because she's in the uppers. Uh this is where Super Saiyan God Goku is. This is where he ended up because of his weird face, right? Uh, I think he might have made it to four also unless you ranked him low. Okay, he might be also in four. Um, damn, I'm really having bad memory with remembering. There's a good thing that Raider has the legit <laughs> list. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that I tweeted, um, oh my God, our first negative on the big talking about the episode we're recording right now yeah and someone immediately responded oh god it's vegeta <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's true uh actually no, the, i'll let raider fan do the rest of it but i will give you an update because you actually legitimately miss units uh so obachan was given a three out of five big boy uh sour man General Ta J Mercenary Tau and General Blue were also all given one out of fives. Oof. General 
General Blue was giving, I think he was pretty close to a zero out of five because I remembered all his creepy, weird uh, pedophile stuff. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what? The first revision ever, I'm going to give him a zero out of five because really that version of General Blue really kills everything about his character. <laughs> You're kind of. Yeah. The only character that can get away with that is Hisoka. It's true. It's the only one. Because General Blue was just fucking creepy, and you were happy that uh, Gen- Mercenary Tao tongued him to death. Oh, God. God, Mercenary Tao, such that a good... description did make it better. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of To Be Released. I can't wait to see what people have to say about this one. But remember, we are everyone is on a thing called the big boy scale. So that should show you how much attention you should pay to it. It's not exactly uh, a list here. It's just the big boy scale. Exactly. Have fun, everyone. Goodbye.